Welcome to Sweden and snow. Today it's cold, minus 15. We're going to talk about how to start vehicles when it's cold outside. And uh, if you have temperatures 10 to 15 degrees below Celsius, um, it will cause problems. And if you go further down, well, 15 degrees isn't that really cold, but if you think of 30 to 35 degrees, you really have problems. And if it's even colder, like 40, 50 degrees, uh, then it's um, pretty harsh conditions. So um, in these conditions with the cold, you have to be a bit prepared, but there are solutions to, to deal with that. And towards the end, we will uh, take you and show how it's done in reality and also use um, fire to heat things up. So uh, keep on watching and let's start. In my ordinary car, I have um, an engine heater, which I connect to the car and the other end to get electric power. And uh, that works pretty well if you use it a couple of hours in the morning. The engine is warm enough to start it up and uh, then you get the heat in the car a bit quicker. But um, most modern car, um, cars today, they have a, a built-in heater in which use diesel or something. So um, there's a combination you can use if, if you want. But if we move back to the army days in the early 1940s, uh, during the Second World War, we had uh, pretty cold winters, minus 40 or 45 degrees. And to keep the vehicles moving, they installed this kind of preheater and they were mounted to the vehicle before the winter. So they were on, in place uh, during the whole winter period. And they used them with um, methylated spirit to heat up the cooling water which is circulating in the engine a couple of hours before starting up in the morning and then the next day the same procedure. So um, this was a solution that uh, worked pretty well and in most cars they had them on so you can see them on, on uh, pictures from, from that uh, period. And that is something that they learned to use even later and there are a few other solutions as well that we will look into. In most Swedish military vehicles with diesel engine we had the start pilot which uh, is a very handy equipment for starting during cold conditions and it, even if it's not that really cold it, it can help a lot and to use it you need to have this small bottles with um, uh, ether to start, easy, easy to start and uh, you put them in here and with this needle you puncture, puncture them. So with the container in, you punch it you get a hole and it drips out and then it's very important that you need to crank the engine before you start pumping. So you crank the engine and then you pump this into the cylinders. And with this really easy to start ether, it starts and then off you go. If you use this and pump without cranking the engine, you will fill one cylinder and it have happened that the engine, well, it blows and then it's gone. So you have to do it crank and then pump and start. It starts. So very easy to have on diesel engines. On the bus previously, we had the old um, methylated spirit blower, which um, just used during the wartime and years after that. And then later on, these came, which is more effective, and they are connected in the same way with hoses to the same type of connectors that have been used for eight years and um, still are in, in use. This is um, 
a heat exchanger. We have cooling water in the system, so you connect it to the cooling water on the vehicle, and then you use this kind of kerosene uh, heater. Put it there, and when the temperature is enough, you have to check it on, on the meter in, in the car, and uh, then it's just to start. So you preheat the water for the engine, and it's uh, much easier to start. And this is a really effective equipment that was used in almost every water-cold vehicle that we had in the army from the 1950s and on onwards. And they're still in use today, even if different depending on the kind of vehicle. And you also could have big ones. Um, and later I will show you how to use it and how to use this one in reality with the fire. If you have an air-cooled engine and there you don't have the cooling water to preheat, um, there are other solutions. Or if um, in many cases in the Swedish Army we had civilian vehicles that were brought, supposed to be brought into to service um, in case of a, a conflict and they were not prepared for the pre preheating system. So um, th there you had other solutions to, to use in different uh, vehicles. And one solution is this one. Um, it's, um, it's a box that you pull in under the engine or the gearbox and you have preheated with fire and coal on the inside. So this really is hot and you have it under the vehicle and then you can cover the whole front of the vehicle so you keep the warmth on the inside. So this is one solution that we had uh, different kinds of this where you use fire on the inside and you create heat for the engine or the gearbox or the axles which is also vulnerable. Another thing to do if it's really cold is to take out the battery from the vehicle and keep it inside in the building or inside the tent. If you're living in, in a tent, you keep it close to something warm so you keep the temperature on the battery perhaps uh, 20 degrees plus and then you bring it out and it's still warm enough to have the power to start the engine. If it's outside in minus 40, it's um, very, very low uh, effectiveness on the battery. So that's one solution, to bring the battery inside to the heat. You can also drain the water, heat it somewhere else, and then pour it back again. You can drain the oil, heat it and then bring it back again. So there are many different solutions. And in some cases, they needed to use all of these in the same. So keep the engine really, really warm. And uh, you could also take out the spark plugs and put them on the stove. So you have them heated and warm enough before you put them in the engine again and then start up. So there are a lot of different clever solutions that you can use to bring the engine to life when it's minus 30, 40, 50 degrees um, and pretty hard conditions. So with bigger engines, a uh, preheater like this um, is not enough. We would have to use it for a week to heat this tank up. So we had different sizes of them and they were called uh, quick quick heaters, snab motorvärmare. With uh, the same principle, you connect it to the to the tank, you have a, a bigger blower to uh, heat up and you also had a manual pump to circulate the water. But that was a bit tricky to 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 use them. They were big and uh, had to carry them somewhere. So normally when we use these tanks out in the cold winter, 
we started them up and then every four hours or so, if standing still, we started the engine for half an hour or so just to circulate the water and keep them warm enough. And that was during night time as well. So always had during the exercises, the drivers, they had some sort of schedule to dress up, go out minus 35 degrees to one tank at the time, start it up, run it for half an hour and then go to back to sleep again. And then four hours later, another tour out to start them up again. And that was uh, the easiest way, even if it was quite tiring to do it, but it was the easiest way to do it. In the Centurion, you also had the benefit with the auxiliary engine that creating power for an electric system and you could you run that to circulate the, the water in the whole system then that was also something that was used during daytime but you don't necessarily are using the main engine all the time but that using the engines start them up and warming them up uh, every four hours or so it uh, takes a lot of fuel so you had to refuel more often during winter time. It can be quite cold up above the polar circle in Sweden, minus 30, 40 degrees, uh, but uh, normally it's not that cold in Sweden as in Soviet Union or Russia today, where they had this during the whole winter and they were prepared for this. So in the tanks, in the the fighting vehicles, they had preheaters installed inside the vehicle. So you can preheat the engine with the kit that you brought with you. So in this T-55 tank, there is a preheater from here, the green thing up to here, uh, one meter long. And inside you burn diesel to heat up the cooling water that circulates within the engine. And using that for maybe half an hour or so, then you can start up the engine. This is quite powerful and uh, you could heat a normal house with this. Uh, it's uh, many kilowatts that that creates. Um, and it's, you need it when it's minus 40, 50 degrees. So um, it's very handy to have. Not only Soviet vehicles, but also some of the Western countries also had this system in the vehicles. With uh, Leopard 2, for instance, you have a preheater in the tank that you can use for cold starting conditions. So it's not only for Soviet vehicles. So now we are outside in the winter and the cold. And I've prepared this uh, Heglund's BV206 for uh, preheating the engine and uh, for the people who know how this is supposed to work this is not the correct bracket to fasten the preheater to the to the vehicle but I didn't have the proper one so I had to make my own uh, so it's uh, not exactly as it should be just for the for the record but the principle is the same Cooling water in this and the hoses connected to the engine and there you have four valves that you open on the engine side and on the pre preheater side. So you connect them and then you open up the valves and you have circulation. And then you need to have, uh, have some fire and this is the normal size for this one the kerosene blower that you put in there and you leave it for 15 minutes, half an hour or so depending on how cold it's outside and you have to check the temperature on the inside. In this vehicle you also need to switch on the circulation pump so you circulate the cooling water in the system when you're doing this um, this procedure. Just leave it and uh, then when it's ready to start you you start the engine. In uh, 
some other you can have a bit bigger ones not for this one or you have the heavy artillery if it's really really cold and you have a much bigger preheater so let's begin so first you have to prepare and start this one and it ta takes a while you pump up the pressure on the kerosene so and then you need some starting fuel methylated spirit So this will, will heat up the end of where it's all burning. So you need to, to preheat uh, for some time and then when it's warm enough you can try to start it. So if you need to go to work early in the morning, you have to get up at 3 o'clock, then you have to have some um, breakfast perhaps and then go out in the cold and do all these preparations and then uh, maybe one or two late hours later you are ready to, to start the engine and go to work. Life is fantastic if it's winter time. Or you could work from home. Okay, so that we not enough, not enough. So, warm enough and we remove the blower and then we are ready to, to start. Half an hour later ready to go and when it's cold outside you need to have you need to have some coffee this is pre-preparations but um, if you have a tank you can make your own coffee and uh, there's a film about that in our YouTube channel so um, this was all from today Bye bye until next time. Ah. You have an air cooled engine that you don't have the cooling water to cool to which I connect to the 
Tro. To the wall, eller jag får säga. Ja. To the car and the other end to the socket and to get electric. 